Hi, this is Jewel. Today's topic is on the third quadrant operation of the gallium nitrate hemp and its comparison with the traditional silicon power fit. In the first figure, as you can see, this is a silicon based power MOSFET. It has three terminals, gate drain and source. And if we apply a gate voltage VGS greater than the threshold voltage, the channel is formed and the current can be carried both way from drain to source or source to drain through the channel. But there is another path through the body diode, depending on the gate ad, applied gate voltage. If the applied gate voltage is less than threshold voltage or zero, in this case, the diode is forward biased and it can carry current from source to drain. So which path it should take depends on what kind of on resistance we want, but that we'll discuss later. But for the gallium nitrate hemp, as we'll see later in the structure, there is no built-in PN junction or intrinsic body diode. So how the third quadrant operation happen. By the way, by third quadrant operation, we mean the third quadrant of IV characteristics. So we'll see that in a couple of slides later. But when both the drain current as well as the drain to source voltage are negative, we call it a third quadrant operation or reverse current operation. So why do we care about the third quadrant operation? So here we can see a synchronous buck rectifier. So the top switch and the bottom switch should not be turned on at the same time because then there will be some shoot through event happening. So when the top switch is turned on, the current flows through the channel and flows through the load inductor. But when it turns off, we cannot immediately turn on the bottom switch because that can um, turn into a shoot through event when essentially the input DC bias will be shorted and there will be a lot of currents flowing through and we call it the shoot through event that can destroy the devices. And that's why there is a little dead time during which time both the devices are off and the current is being conducted through the body diode in the office state. So both of these things are at the office state and that's why the body diode conduction is important or the third quadrant conduction is important. So we'll see in the device structure, this is the typical device structure for a power fit. These are N plus source, heavily doped N plus, P body. This is N minus drift region or we call AP layer. And for the ohmic contact, we have N plus substrate, which is heavily doped N. And it has three terminal as usual. This is the source. This is the gate that can be made of polysilicon as well as metal. And this is the drain, which is vertically downward. And that's why it is called the vertical structure. So we'll see in later videos that the GAN hems are lateral currently and vertical MOSFETs are vertical so that's why they have some built-in uh, differences that we should point out so this is the channel underneath the gate inside the pi body and electrons are flowing from the source to the drain vertically similar from this source to the drain vertically when a positive gate bias is drain bias is applied and typically the source is grounded what if if we reverse the polarity there is a built-in PIN diode between this P body, N minus drift region, and N plus substrate. And that PIN diode is turned on or forward biased when you apply the negative potential at the drain side. And that has a different current path. So we have two current paths now, one through the body diode, another through this channel from source to drain. But which will happen depend on the applied gate bias. If the gate bias is greater than threshold voltage, then it will follow the channel current and if it is zero or less than threshold voltage, it will try to follow the third quadrant that is the body diode. And as you can see from this structure that the GAN E mode hemp, E mode means the enhancement mode hemp, has this structure, it has source, it has drain, and this is the gate terminal. And underneath the gate, there is a P type GAN cap layer. We will discover later that this P type GAN layer makes it E mode, meaning that essentially there is no channel formed when no gate bias has been applied so there are depletion mode device as well as enhancement mode device and we'll talk about the enhancement mode device today but the same discussion goes for depletion as well so what is happening here is there is a two-dimensional sheet of electrons underneath the LGAN and GAN layer which is called the 2DEG or two-dimensional electron gas and that has been controlled by this gate terminal Either you deplete, disconnect these two DEG or you connect. And then you have an electron flow from the source to the drain and the current can flow. 
So as we already see that there is no PN junction diode or PIN body diode to carry the third quadrant operation. So what is happening actually when you apply the gate voltage compared to the source, depending on the VGS value, if it is greater than the threshold, the channel is formed and the current starts flowing. So when you apply more bias to the positive, I mean positive bias to the drain voltage, the current starts flowing that way. But what if, if you apply a positive bias in the source side and negative bias in the drain side, that is you reverse the polarity. Then instead of VGS, the gate to drain voltage actually controls the current. So source and drain, these two terminals are swapped at that point. So whatever we considered as the source before, now that will be treated as the drain. And that's why the relation is no longer VGS greater than threshold for the conduction. So this is for first quadrant operation or the usual typical operation. So first quadrant operation. But for the third quadrant operation, the source has been swapped by the drain. So the gate to drain voltage must be greater than threshold to carry the current. So we can write it this way, VGS minus VDS. Just following applying some Kirchhoff's voltage law. And by reversing the polarity, you can say VGS plus VSD greater than the threshold. So it means, so VSD must be greater than the threshold minus VGS. That is, the current conduction will happen not only with respect to the gate to source potential as well as the source to drain potentials. So say for example, you have the GAN hemmed here. You didn't apply any gate bias there. So VGS equals zero. And you are applying positive bias to the source side and drain to the negative bias. So you have a positive V source to drain. Say for example, your threshold voltage is five volt. And if you apply source to drain five volt, then it says five volt equal five volt minus zero. That means it will start conducting. What if, if you apply positive gate voltage as well? So if you apply VGS to be two volt, you need V source to drain equal five volt minus two volt, that is three volt. So it will start conducting even at three volt. So if we look at the third quadrant operation of the IV characteristics, you'll see that this is the first quadrant and this is the third quadrant region where both ID and VDS are negative. So as you can see that these two plots are for two different VGS, VGS1, VGS2. Similarly, VGS1 and VGS2, they are mirror plotted. So first and third quadrant operations are almost similar. But this region is the cutoff region where VGS less than threshold. So there is no channel form and no current is flowing. But this is not the same story in the third quadrant. So after a forward drop in the third quadrant, it will start to flow like a diode because that is the PIN diode that I showed earlier. But what if, if we apply some gate biases as well, then you will see that it is starting to follow the MOSFET characteristics instead of the diode. So depending on your rated current, you will see that for a particular rated current, the forward drop is much higher in case of the diode. This is the diode forward drop and this is the MOSFET forward drop. And depending on your applied gate bias, the MOSFET forward drop is very low. And that's why people would like to, or the designers would like to operate their power MOSFETs third quadrant in this region with a gate bias on. But usually during the synchronous buck operation, during the turn off time or during the dead time, the power diode eventually carries the current and that's why you cannot control that by some gate. Because at the time, both the gates are off essentially. But this is not the same scenario with the GAN hems. Because in the GAN hem, there is no PN body diode. And that's why what is happening here, if you apply some gate biases, so we are applying some gate bias. So this is the gate bias of one, then two, and then three. So depending on your gate biases, you will need a particular V source to drain to turn the device on. So it is not only the VGS, but also the source to drain voltage matters. And that's why your third quadrant curves will look almost like a diode, but it is actually following the MOSFET trend. It will also reach the pin punch through as well as the saturation region. But what what is the important takeaway from this is it shows the third quadrant behavior 
even without there is no doubt and it's a lateral device so source and drains are symmetric and that's why source and drain can be swapped during the operation so how that matters in the power loss calculation and things so as we see that during the dead time when both the top device and the bottom device are off especially during this time this is the off time you'll see that the MOSFET is carrying a V reverse voltage there and depending on that V reverse you will have a power loss and that power loss depends on your switching frequency as well as your reverse voltage applied so it's a design optimization that you can control the dead time as well as the reverse voltage applied there or some adaptive control mechanism to minimize the losses but actually we don't want to use some external short cure anti-parallel diode to minimize these things because then we will encounter some reverse recovery losses as well as some external capacitances added so that we really don't want so thanks for watching and happy making sense